finally we have reached the last module of this course and in this module we are going to discuss few of those things which we haven't got the time to discuss in detail in the course uh, uh, but uh, the, the discussion here will be a little uh, less rigorous than we have done for the other cases but it is important to know these results and if you are interested in a later course of uh, mechanism design you can actually learn more about these uh, properties. So um, we have discussed uh, efficiency uh, to a very large extent of this uh, second part, the mechanism design part of this course. And we have also seen uh, wh when and uh, where it can be made budget balanced. Uh, and in particular, we have looked at auction settings where uh, we try to make the auction budget balanced and we failed. So uh, here we are going to see that there is a inherent tension between efficiency and budget balance and uh, how can we actually get to that result is what we are going to discuss next. This is a result due to Green and Lafon. So um, when we are talking about Groves class, uh, we essentially try to find out the efficient allocation which is nothing but the sum, uh, the allocation that maximizes the sum of the values of all these agents. Uh, in this uh, first result, we are going to uh, tell you uh, how gross mechanism is unique for efficiency. So uh, the result says, uh, this was uh, done by Green and Lafont and independently by Holmstrom and uh, both of them have shown that if the type space is sufficiently rich and I am not going to explain uh, uh, further what is sufficiently rich, you can imagine that all possible kind of valuations are feasible as we have discussed in the case of um, uh, Roberts result, Roberts theorem. So in that uh, sufficiently rich class of type spaces, every efficient and DSIC mechanism is a Groves mechanism. This is a very strong characterization result that if you want efficiency and dominant strategy incentive compatibility, then you must be in the Groves class. Now, uh, we are going to give the proof sketch only for two alternatives for multiple more than two alternatives. This proof can be actually extended and that is exactly what uh, this Holmstrom's result do. Uh, this um, this um, uh, presentation is essentially uh, from Holmstrom uh, paper itself. So uh, what we are going to do is we are looking at the welfare under these two uh, alternatives. So let's say we are looking at uh, the sum of the valuations uh, of all the players at this alternative A and that in alternative B. And we know that efficiency means that whenever this uh, Ti, the sum over Ti A is uh, larger or at least as much as Ti B, then A will be chosen, breaking the tie in favor of A. Okay, so now uh, what we are going to do to understand uh, why uh, this uh, um, uh, efficiency is very much tied to the uh, gross payment rule, let us first look at what happens uh, when we fix all the uh, types of all the other agents except agent i. So for t minus i, for both these alternatives a and b, we are going to fix those values we are only going to change ti of a so this value here even for player the the uh, player i uh, even for the uh, alternative b or the allocation b we are also going to hold its uh, valuation to be fixed right now what happens is that uh, if you if you now change this ti of a uh, you can actually choose ti a to be sufficiently negative such that uh, this inequality does not hold anymore. So in that case, B will start becoming the winner. And after a certain value, uh, a threshold value of TIA, which we are going to call as TI star of A, uh, the outcome will start becoming A because that after that threshold, this uh, inequality starts becoming uh, true. Okay, so uh, let us consider that threshold TI star A um, we know that this this is if you are if you are uh, thinking in terms of a line, TI uh, star A is a threshold below which if you and this is just uh, TIA so TIA is being varied between uh, over uh, a real line and be, below this threshold it is going to be the outcome is going to be B and above this the outcome is going to be A. Uh, this is because we have actually fixed all the other valuations even the valuation for that agent for uh, the other alternative B and for all the other agents at both alternatives A and B the valuations are fixed. 
fair enough so now we are going to look at two different situations so uh, a tia which can be slightly above this so let's say somewhere here uh, which is ti star of a plus epsilon if ti a is uh, so then we can actually apply the the condition of dsic so dsic says what so it says that if you re reveal your valuation truthfully then the the, uh, the utility that you are going to get is going to be at least as much as if you misreport to something else and uh, we know that if you misreport and the outcome does not change then nothing nothing changes so you cannot really be better off the only way you can change your payoff is by changing the outcome so suppose you misreport to something which is uh, living somewhere here so that the outcome becomes b and in that case the utility will be this right hand side and because of dsic this inequality should uh, should hold and now i would also like to uh, mention one point that we have said long ago that if you if you are uh, looking at only dsic mechanisms then by changing the valuation the valuation report if you cannot change the outcome then the payment should also remain the same so we have said that um, uh, it is only going to be dependent on the outcome of the uh, of the mechanism and not on the type because if you could change the uh, if you could change your valuation report uh, which does not change your allocation but it changes the uh, the the payment then there is a possibility of misreport uh, manipulation so you it uh, that mechanism will never be dsic so i i had asked you to prove this uh, maybe you can go back to that exercise again and see that whenever you are changing so your payment uh, as long as the outcome remains the same as a it is going to be uh, the same payment so we can without loss of generality just mention the payment uh, with respect to the allocation itself so this is one observation and this inequality is due to dsic so this is when your uh, true type uh, is slightly above uh, tia star so the outcome the if you reveal it truthfully the outcome becomes a so now consider another situation where the true type uh, let's say ti of a the same ti of a is actually falling below this so the true true type is somewhere here ti star a minus uh, delta right so here if you reveal your type truthfully then the outcome becomes b and because in in b your uh, type is the same as ti of b which we haven't changed so in that case the valuation becomes tib if he uh, reports truthfully and uh, uh, the payment would be pi of b so this utility is uh, the utility when he is uh, this agent i is being truthful and uh, the right hand side is suppose it uh, reveals something else uh, it uh, misreports to somewhere here some value uh, report which is here and thereby the outcome changes to a but the point is that t its true type uh, for a is actually ti a star minus delta so this is the this is the valuation that this agent gets when the outcome a is chosen and it makes a payment of pia by dsic this inequality should also get uh, satisfied now what you can see here is that if you look at the, this quantities ti star uh, ti star a minus pia and tib minus pib uh, all uh, all that is different in these two inequalities is that they are flipping their sides of the inequality and epsilon and delta are uh, subtracted added or subtracted into this uh, into these two cases now because epsilon and delta are arbitrarily we can actually take the limiting value of this epsilon and delta and what we can get is that um, this equal this inequality will become an equality because here if you uh, let a delta go to zero then you have an inequality in the reverse direction uh, than the inequality here so you get this equality and this equality will be very crucial so we will be using it very carefully we also know that uh, ti star is the threshold of the efficient outcome so what does that mean so that means that uh, this is that point where if you take the sum of all the uh, agents values at that uh, outcome a it must be exactly equal to the sum of the values of uh, of all the other agents so because ti star we are actually holding all these types to be exactly same 
and ti star a was the point uh, beyond which if it is more than that your if your type is type for uh, type of player i uh, at alternative at out allocation a goes beyond this point then of course this part will uh, become larger than the other part and therefore the outcome will start becoming the efficient outcome will start becoming a and if it is smaller than that then this becomes larger so therefore the outcome will be p so this inequality uh, this equality should get satisfied uh, and this is by definition of ti, TI star a now from 1 and 2 what we are going to do is we are looking uh, we are uh, interested in looking at what is the difference between pi a and pi b uh, you can do this reorganization uh, and uh, find out that this is going to be exactly equal to summation of tjb's where j is not equal to i and some minus summation over tja where j is not equal to uh, i and this should remind you something very similar that we have done in the gross payment class so gross payments were uh, such that uh, this in, uh, this equality should get satisfied uh, only when you have this kind of a structure in the payment uh, which has one component which might not depend on ti at all and the second component which depends uh, on uh, on all these a uh, agents so essentially we are looking at pi of x so any outcome x uh, x can be either a or b uh, and uh, this uh, the second term will be the sum of the valuations of all the agents at that uh, outcome and the first term will not depend on uh, a type of player i at all and if you think carefully this is exactly the gross payment so this is not the proof but it is an intuition how you can actually go about and think about uh, how the uh, the payment would look like when we have efficient outcomes efficient and dsic mechanisms so for two players certainly the the mechanism is going to be um, uh, gross uh, gross payment i mean uh, the payment will be in the gross class of um, uh, payments and uh, this can be even extended for more than two, two alternatives, two allocations. The second result, so now we know that if you want DSIC and efficiency, then you better be in the class groves. Uh, Grinnell Lafont gives another result which says that uh, no gross mechanism is budget balanced. So you cannot find any uh, gross mechanism which falls in this class and is budget balanced and uh, therefore you can actually conclude the fact that uh, if you are looking for uh, efficient and budget balanced mechanism uh, then uh, that set is null so you cannot find anything so this is an impossibility result so you are not going to uh, get into the proof of this this is a little elaborate uh, but even then i have given the proof sketch so this uh, notes will be available so you can take a look at it so yeah so finally we can have this summarizing these two results we can have this corollary if the valuation space is sufficiently rich then no efficient mechanism can be both dsic and budget balance that is the uh, that is the conclusion that we can make now how should we get uh, get around this uh, impossibility result so one of the uh, uh, early attempts to uh, bypass this result is to weaken the condition of DSIC. So uh, DSIC is a much stronger condition, but you can also look at something called a BIC mechanism, and we have seen that before. So allocation still becomes the, uh, the remains the efficient one, but the payment in that setting, now that we have a, have a, a prior uh, distribution over all these types, we can actually have we can take the expectation with respect to t minus i uh, given uh, the agent uh, knows its own ti so this is an uh, ex interim uh, expectation of uh, over this prior so the mechanism designer in this case is actually doing this expectation and charging this much amount of payment to each of these agents so delta i ti is the the payment that it is charging to that player as soon as it uh, reports ti it is going to be charged this amount and that is going to be nothing but the um, uh, you look at the same summation of all the uh, valuation of all the other agents except agent i at that optimal value at that optimal allocation but you are also taking the expectation with respect to t minus i so uh, this function even though uh, the original sum was a function of both t i and t minus i 
because this is now being expected over t minus i, so this uh, ceases to become a function of t minus i. So this finally becomes just a function of t i. So the allocation as before remains the efficient allocation, but the payment uh, with this definition of uh, delta i t i is modified in the following way. Uh, it is uh, summing all these delta j s t j. So we have used this delta i t i just to define how we are going to calculate the payment under this new mechanism. We are going to sum over all the agents this value of delta j t j for all the agents except agent i and uh, uh, take a product with 1 over n minus 1. So we will see why or what is the purpose of uh, keeping this multiplier of 1 by n minus 1 and subtracting out delta i t i. This is also quite similar to the, uh, the VCG mechanism, but the only difference is that this is expectation with respect to T minus i for each of these delta j's. And uh, for that reason, sometimes this DAGVA is also called, this mechanism is called the DAGVA mechanism. So this mechanism is also called, sometimes called the expected VCG mechanism. And the name DAGVA comes from the, uh, from the names of its inventors. So this payment uh, implements the efficient allocation, uh, this efficient allocation rule in Bayes Nash equilibrium. So what do we mean by that? So we'll have to uh, look at the, um, uh, the, uh, the utility of each of these players and take the expectation with respect to T minus i given T i. So uh, we know that this is the, the payoff, uh, this is the evaluation of this agent i uh, when the allocation is A star T. So uh, the allocation remains the same, it is still the same efficient allocation. Payment is uh, replaced by this DAGVA mechanism and we are now taking the expectation with respect to T minus i given t i. So this is the x interim utility of player i. So we can just expand this out and uh, this is uh, quite straightforward. You can you can do this uh, exercise. So what happens is that this term, so uh, we, we have this term separately handled and this delta i t i comes in the beginning and we notice that this delta i t i term was nothing but uh, the expectation of t minus i given t i for all the agents except agent i and now we are going to sum that uh, with this t i a star t uh, and together they will be uh, constituting the, the sum over all agents including agent i and that becomes the first term here and the second term the, the point to observe here is that this term is no longer a function of t i. So here everything is uh, uh, so in the first expression there is a t i term there but for the second expression there is no ti. So what we can uh, say here is that this term, so the uh, this first expression because a star t is the maximizing uh, the arg max of this sum, so this is going to be larger than any other uh, outcome. So if we look at the same summation over all these tj's and if, if we replace this with any other alternative, um, then this quantity, this uh, term itself, even before this expectation is going to be larger than that. And in particular, we are going to pick it uh, very carefully. We are going to pick it for the same efficient allocation when this agent is misreporting to TI prime. And this is the very similar idea that we have done even for the VCG mechanism. If you do that, this inequality is going to get satisfied. And because this is uh, not dependent on TI, we can again uh, refactor all these uh, terms and go to something like uh, uh, this expression here. So where we have this PIDAGVA uh, PI when agent i is misreporting to TI prime and this term is nothing but the utility of that, uh, the valuation of that player when it is reporting TI prime. So uh, it shows that it is uh, in expectation, so uh, in, a, in a Bayesian Nash equilibrium, uh, reporting uh, its type truthfully is the best response. The uh, important part here is that uh, the, the payment of this DAGVA is chosen in such a way that if we take the sum over all these things, so remember what was the, uh, what was the uh, term here, 1 over n by 1 and then this term here and then the second term was uh, minus D and delta i t i and if we take the summation over all these agents, uh, in this summation we are excluding one specific delta i term. And uh, when we are taking the sum over all those cases, uh, the whole sum will have n minus 1 copies of each of this delta, delta i. 
so we can write so the, this uh, term can be actually written so this uh, double summation can be written as a single summation multiplied by n minus 1 and this n minus 1 was the reason why we have uh, had this multiplier 1 by n minus 1 they cancel out and the second term is simply the equal to this part of this uh, first term and uh, uh, after we have taken the summation over uh, the payments over all these players these two terms essentially cancel out and it becomes exactly equal to 0 and that was the reason what we have uh, why this pi uh, of dea gva was chosen in such a form uh, so that it becomes budget balance by design so um, we can we can conclude that this DAGVA mechanism is efficient by uh, design we have proven that it is uh, it is BIC and now we have also shown that it is budget balance so this is one mechanism uh, which is which satisfies these three properties even though it is a, a at a compromise of the incentive compatibility property so uh, what about the participation guarantee the individual rationality constraint uh, one can create examples to show that DAGV is not uh, interim individually rational and in particular um, there is a impossibility result due to Meyerson and Sadovit which says that in a bilateral trade even the simplest form of the mechanism uh, where uh, two types of agents only a seller and a buyer no mechanism can be simultaneously BIC efficient IIR and budget balance so this essentially seals the problem that uh, we cannot really go any further so we cannot really weaken this uh, mechanism any further unless, unless we uh, change some of these properties or we go for some other kind of approaches let's say approximation or something all right so that essentially concludes the discussion of uh, mechanism design uh, which is in the scope of this course uh, so to summarize and uh, kind of uh, get a feel of all the results that we have discussed so far let me give you a very uh, uh, broad pictorial overview of the the whole domain the space of mechanisms that we have discussed so on the left hand side of this figure we have uh, uh, looked at the valuation or the type space or the domain as we have said uh, we are we are talking about the social choice functions its domain uh, can be unrestricted can be restricted and so on and then we uh, on the right hand side we look at the the type of dsic mechanisms which we can uh, which uh, uh, we have characterized uh, uh, through several results so the first is the largest class so unrestricted this is the the, the class that takes care of all other uh, subclasses or the uh, subdomains so if it is unrestricted then by the gibbard sadovit result we know that the outcome is going to be uh, the mechanism that can satisfy DSIC is dictatorial so of course we are uh, uh, also looking at some other properties but at this point we are not uh, so much worried the, the broader result is that in the unrestricted domain to satisfy dominant strategy incentive compatibility will only have the dictatorial mechanism now let us look at the the next uh, domain restriction which was single picked uh, preferences and along with anonymity and ontoness we have seen that this mechanism this uh, subclass can have non dictatorial uh, cases and which falls under this class of mechanism called median voter in fact this is if and only if so both directions are true <coughs> and that is the result due to mula similarly uh, if we look at another subclass which is the uh, task sharing domain we have also discussed that anonymity and pair to efficiency uniquely identifies that the mechanism is going to be uniform rule and uh, that is also if and only if uh, result and this is a result due to sprumo N now we have um, after that we have actually moved into the domain of quasi linear preferences this is a preference domain where uh, the uh, we are also talking about transfers these are mechanism designed with transfers and the uh, utility is in the quasi linear form so if we have unrestricted quasi linear preferences and then we have this results due to Roberts which says that the uh, DSIC mechanisms must necessarily be affine maximizers and this is a unidirectional thing unlike Sprumo or Mula which implies uh, this in both directions uh, this is only in one direction so it's a necessary, a necessary result um, so the the second uh, condition that when we actually look at the efficient outcome under this quasi-linear preferences uh, then we have seen that it has to be 
according to the results due to Green and Lafont, it has to be uh, sitting in this gross class of payments. So the mechanism has to be uh, the gross class of mechanisms. And on top of that, uh, within that efficiency class, if we also want to ensure budget balance, then again by the same result of uh, Green Lafont, uh, by the same paper of Green Lafont, uh, we see that the set is going to be empty. So there is no such mechanism which can be simultaneously efficient, budget balance and also DSIC. Okay, so that was all about the DSIC mechanisms that we have discussed, uh, several results. Uh, let us now move on to the BIC mechanisms and there we have also looked at the similar situation of quasi-linear preferences. Uh, this is mechanisms uh, with uh, transfers. And if we have efficiency and budget balance, here it is possible unless uh, unlike the, the previous case. And this is a sufficient condition that if you use DAGVA mechanism, then we can actually satisfy this. There is no characterization of BS, BIC mechanism. So uh, characterizing BIC mechanisms is, is much more difficult. We have only done that for the single object allocation. But apart from that, there is no, no such general uh, purpose uh, characterization results. Due to Myerson's and Sutherweight, we know that if we also want to ensure efficiency, budget balance and in, uh, interim individual rationality, then they, that set will be empty. So we cannot really find any mechanism which satisfies all these three properties together along with BIC. And for the single object allocation, uh, so which is a very special case of the quasi-linear domain, uh, if we want, uh, want to uh, satisfy DSIC mechanisms, uh, we have uh, seen this uh, result due to Myerson. So all these results are essentially due to Myerson. Um, uh, the, uh, the DSIC characterization says that the allocation rule should be non-decreasing and the payment should be given by the Myerson's payment formula. Uh, similarly, for BIC mechanisms, a very similar uh, thing uh, works. The allocation rule has to be non-decreasing in expectation now and an equivalent Myerson payment rule can be designed. Now, if I uh, look for bi uh, BIC as well as optimal mechanism, which is maximizing the revenue, then it has to it um, uh, leads to a mechanism which is a reserve price auction. So we have the uh, the same auction as the second price auction, but with a reserve price, and that happens. I mean, the the reserve price has to be set based on the uh, based on the priors that we have. But uh, the point is that uh, we can actually design a mechanism. Uh, and that mechanism happens to be very uh, simple, a second price auction with a reserve price and that uh, maximizes the revenue for the auction. Alright, so that gives you a kind of a panoramic view of all the things that we have discussed in the mechanism design part. The first part of this course was uh, more about developing the foundational uh, stuff on game theory. So hope you have li liked this course.